Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. For today's video, we are taking a look at Eldritch Zombie. We're taking a look at a budget-friendly version for that matter, or as budget-friendly as it can be, for those of you who are out there looking to do things a little bit on the cheap. Now, of course, some of these cards have skyrocketed over time. Baladrock, in particular, has gotten a little bit on the more expensive side, but for the most part, if you're fortunate enough to pick up the deck early, or you can trade into it, it's a very easy one-off to pick up. And otherwise, the extra deck and all the rest of it is relatively inexpensive. Now, keep in mind that this particular deck profile will still need a little bit of work. Of course, it is keeping in mind that things are budget-friendly, so it does depend on exactly what you have access to as to what you might want to chop up and change. Now, as a quick note before we go any further, if you are looking to pick up any singles, maybe this video has left you feeling a little bit inspired to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store, and if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. And one final note before we get stuck into the profile, let me apologise if there's any weird noise in the background. It is absolutely fucking sweltering, that's exactly why I'm not on camera, and I'm just doing microphone work here, because I'm just a big fucking sweaty mess, which as you can imagine with how ugly I am normally can you imagine me pouring in sweat but seriously though it's not really a sight many people want to see so if there are any loud noise in the background that's probably fans going off slash my dog dying because he can't fucking breathe properly but there you go Anyway, so getting into the profile here, so we do have two copies of Eldritch the Golden Lord. I think this is pretty much the way to go. Most people would understand that much. I think two is absolutely fine. The third gets a little bit cloggy, even in this particular build. Two is more than enough. The other thing that is obviously with this build, it's less... Uh, Let's rely on uh, Eldritch, the Golden Lord himself, in the sense that you can still use a lot of the spells and traps to get out other zombies as well. So there's a bit more usage for them outside of just him. So even though he's an important part of that engine, it's not the end of the world when you don't see him. Just a single copy of Baladrock. Uh, just the one is more than enough. The card is absolutely insane, but incredibly bricky. You really don't want more than one copy. Most of the time, if anything, you ideally want to just dump this straight into the grave if you can. But it is what it is. It's one of those cards where just a one-off is more than enough. Triple copies of Uni Zombie. I think pretty much mandatory for any zombie deck at the moment. Absolutely insane card. It's foolish barrel. It gets stuff out of your hand. It can bump its levels up so it can make easier rank fours if you want to go down that route. You can go into synchro plays if you want to go down that route instead. You've got plenty of options that you can look into. We then got two copies of Necro World Banshee, of course. This is just going to get you into Zombie World that bit quicker. Zombie World shuts down Tri Brigade, as well as many of the other decks actually suffer really hard to Zombie World. So, a card that you do want to see as quickly as possible, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. But I think Necro World Banshee 2 is just the right amount. A single copy of Mizuki, I think that one is more than enough. You could pair this with a copy of Gozuki, but honestly, I feel like uh, Uni Zombie more or less does the same thing at the moment. And when you're running a much smaller engine in terms of the number of, uh, of monsters that you're going to be wanting to commit to the board, maybe you don't necessarily need that extra piece. A single copy of Glow Up Bloom, uh, much the same reason. You just want to have one copy, just get it into the grave. It's just going to help you get through your deck a little bit quicker. Triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, the most generic hand trap. Uh, it's far more budget friendly than it was, although the prices do again seem to have gone up quite a bit on this. Although it should be relatively easy still to pick up, even though the prices are a little bit higher. But Triple Ash Blossom is pretty much mandatory in almost every single deck. Hand traps are incredibly important in the format at the moment, and this deck is no exception. You need to have access to them, so therefore Triple Ash Blossom seems like a really good shout to me. Triple copy of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. This really, really hurts. Again, Tri Brigade, as well as many of the other meta decks as well, uh, hitting the Revolt and things like that is really, really strong. Of course, you've got the added benefit of this being a zombie, much like you do with Ash Blossom, so you do have those added synergies as well. And then finally, we have Triple Gamma and a single copy of Driver. Honestly, I think this is incredibly important at the moment. You need to put this in every deck that you basically can. Uh, in my mind, at least, it just needs to be in there. Incredibly, incredibly strong. And it's an easy card to side out after game one if you really need to. So you can make space for other cards instead. There is honestly no better feeling in the world than baiting your opponent, which you can do quite easily in this deck. And then nailing that Ash with a Gamma and then punishing them twice over by making Omega and start ripping cards out their hand. It also means that you've got access to Omega a little bit easier, which means you can start shuffling back your own stuff as and when it gets banished. 
Well, triple copies of Zombie World, it's Zombie World. Some people would prefer to play like two copies or something like that. I think three is pretty cool. I mean, you just want to see it at all times. Your opponent is usually going to try and out it as quickly as possible, especially if they're one of those decks that does get hit by it, then they need to get rid of it as quickly as possible. And you just want to be able to make sure that you can keep getting it on board. We have a single copy of Terraform, and I guess you you could arguably cut this, I, I guess. You've got other ways of getting it out of the deck, and but honestly, I just feel like if you're playing field spells, you might as well just play a fourth copy of it. Triple copies of Super Poly. There's actually about a billion different good targets for this, so I couldn't actually fit them all into the extra deck, but this will just give you some ideas of what to do. But honestly, Super Poly, uh, it has its moments. It's incredibly strong against some meta matchups, and against others, it's not quite as good. But honestly, I think it can hit most decks in at least some capacity, and for that reason, it's still a really strong pick. If you wanted to omit it, again, you could play more hand traps, or you could play more back row, maybe solemn strikes in the main, something like that instead. Or maybe if you wanted to play uh, a more decisive extra deck package, something a bit more utility based that you're going to make use of all the time, then you could maybe omit this instead as well. Triple copies of Desires. Uh, this deck does unfortunately have its moments where it can get a little bit bricky. Uh, so it's just going to help you dig. There's sometimes, though, if you don't see any of your pieces, you need to play this, otherwise you just lose. Uh, and if you're banishing stuff, so be it. M most of the stuff in here is three of the one or two that aren't on you know particularly crucial to the deck strategy so honestly i think you just need to play it in here of course if you do have access you can play some of the other pots you can play prosperity or extravagance if you prefer instead but keep keep in mind that we're obviously keeping things on a budget here pot of desires is more than good enough to do the job you could also play a law of darkness if you wanted to but i really don't feel like there's enough uh, monster targets in here to really justify it now onto our Eldritch spells, we have triple copies of Cursed Eldland. This is of course just mandatory, I think, in any Eldritch engine. We've gone ahead and gone for one copy of Eldlixir of Black Awakening. This just being able to summon zombies from the deck is just really nice. Of course, if you've already got Eldritch on board, you can get any of your zombies, which can get your whole engine going, and that seems pretty good to me. It can also help unclog your hand a little bit, so there is that benefit. You can also play, uh, is it the White Awakening or something like that? The uh, the one, that, the, the quick play version. You could play that instead as well, or, or alongside if you wanted to. That's entirely up to you. I felt like that this was sufficient, though. You have a single copy of Foolish Burial. You want everything in the graveyard, so there's no reason not to. Triple copies of Scarlet Sanguine. Again, probably one of the slightly more expensive cards in the deck. But again, you could you could potentially cut this down. Obviously, you don't really want to. Um, but if you really wanted to save some pennies, that's a way of doing it. But for me, Eldlixir of Scarlet Sanguine is just something you need to play. Of course, it just keeps your Eldritch coming out with your deck. You can chain it with your other traps to provide really solid interrupts to your opponent. All of that good stuff. And just get your engine going around. And then for me, these are pretty much the only other ones you need to play. Conquistador and Haquero. Uh, three of each is pretty much mandatory, in my opinion, at least in this deck. Um, none of the other ones really speak to me as being worth playing. Uh, I know that there's like the counter trap is okay, but I don't think it's enough in this, to be honest with you. Now onto the extra deck. Again, this is a bit of a mishmash, but we'll go through it all as we get on with it. So we've got a single copy of Dragon Necro, Nether Soul Dragon. Just a really good option uh, for Super Poly and the like. A single copy of Entis. Uh, this is obviously for more if you get hit by your opponent, like Dogmatica and things like that. And that's obviously primarily what it's in here for. We've got a single copy of Eldlich, the big motherfucker um this is actually not a terrible card it's pretty cool uh in my opinion it's a little bit novelty but there are games where this can actually come up and of course turning everything on the field into zombies does mean it's a little bit easier again to go into with your super poly and the like now we've got some super poly targets here for example uh prankin's weather washer we've got muddy mud dragon or whatever he's called the mud dragon of the swamp is uglier cousin uh we've got predaplan dragostopalia uh we've got world chalice scar dragon armor duke it's just again another example these are really just here as examples for you so you can take a look at exactly what you want and go from there pleiades is just a really good option because of course we can overlay those traps we have as our back row and turn them into this make good use of them and this does come up actually quite a bit it's actually an incredibly strong card sometimes it's really overlooked and i think the fact that you can make it very easy in this deck it's just a really nice option. Uh, Gustav is just here basically if you end up with double Golden Lord. It's just, yeah, just a way. I mean, you can get it off the field a little bit easier. It means you can do damage to your opponent in time or if you're pushing towards time. Uh, yeah, all of that stuff. You know the drill. And then onto our links here, we've got Link Karibo. This can obviously help get your bloom and stuff into the grave. One way of doing it. We've got Vampire Sucker because we're playing zombies, so why wouldn't you? A Nightmare Package, Phoenix and Unicorn, pretty much standard. A Borosaur because it's cheap. And a win button and Omega because we're running the Gamma package. 
Again, the extra deck is very much open to interpretation. A lot of this is down to what you want to play. Of course, if you cut the super poly package, you leave yourself with a hell of a lot more spaces to use. So maybe you can keep that in mind as well. Now onto the side deck. This is again, not a thing perfect. It is just here as an example, but these are the kind of things that I would be looking at. Draw and Lockbird, incredibly strong at the moment. You can also use something like Lands here as well if you wanted to. Uh, we've got triple copies of Effect Veiler. Again, it's just cheap. It's cheaper than Impermanence. And there's also some fringe benefits like uh, it can help you play through Ignis a little bit better in case they make Linger Ebo. It means you can actually hit their cards a little bit better. Just small interactions like that where it comes up. Uh, triple copies of Twin Twisters, if you play against other back row heavy decks, you need a way to out them. Uh, otherwise, you're going to lose those grind matchups. So this is something that you really want. Triple copies of Anti-Spell, this can really, really hurt some of the decks in the format. Of course, Pendulum pretty much just shuts down. Sky Striker, it really slows them down. There's an awful lot of decks where you just play your turn, and then during your opponent's turn, you flip Anti-Spell on it. it. It basically means they have to skip their entire turn from being able to do a lot of stuff for an awful lot of decks. And finally, triple copies of Solemn Strike. I think this is incredibly important at the moment. Really, really strong card in the game. I can see why a lot of people would look to either main or side this, especially in a budget variant deck where you want to get as much value as you can. Something like Solemn Strike is a really good way of doing that. But that, my amigos, is all for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate it. Hopefully this has helped you in some way if you're looking to build a more budget-friendly zombie Eldritch deck. Again, it's not going to be absolutely perfect, but it should give you some ideas of something you could try for yourself. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate it. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.